good afternoon here from MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, as the Denver Broncos once again on the road. Man, let's be dominant. Let's be the best one out there, best one in the league, man. Keep grinding. Grind, 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 do what you do. Grind. On this uh, beautiful October afternoon to play the New York Jets. It's game day, man. We big play Cortland, man. Yeah. Big play Cortland. Don't let him down play himself, man. Let's take it from him. Together on three. One, two, three. Together. Yeah. It was a frustrating day in New York as the Broncos fall 34-16 to the Jets. Hello and thank you for joining us for our film review. I'm Phil Milani alongside Matt Boyer, Steve Atwater, Ray Crockett. Guys, this was a crucial game for the Broncos, but they fell flat, huh, Ray? This was a game that you go back and, and when they look at this, there's going to be a bunch of guys that say, if I would have just done my job instead of trying to do too much, we would have been in better shape. When you go back and look at it, it's like, oh, this, we went over all this stuff. You know, I should have been in this gap versus that gap, but not being able to do it uh, when you're in the moment in the game, it, it's so frustrating and it really caused you to lose a bunch of ball games if you don't get it squared away. The, the start was so good. I mean, you, when, when you see that first quarter, you think to yourself, okay, this is it. All right, we're just going to run away with this right. thing. And obviously that wasn't the case. Yeah, like Matt said, they got off to a great start, but it did not last. The ball is free. Denver claims they've got it. And they do. Bilal Powell coughs it up. And Adam Gotsis comes away with it for the Broncos. Keenum out of the pocket. Pulls the trigger. Back of the end zone. It's Sutton. Touchdown, Broncos. To the edge goes the running back in big hole, 35-40 in a foot race now. Midfield, 45-40, 35-30. Only Adam Jones can catch him. He will not. And that is going to be a Jets touchdown for Isaiah Crowell. Here's Darnold. Airing it out. Deep ball. Separation. Caught. Robbie Anderson. Goodbye. Touchdown, Jets. Brandon McManus, who's been perfect this year, will see Colby Wadman spot it. Far hash at the 20, an attempt of 30 yards. And McManus is perfect from 30. Darnold throwing deep ball. He's got Anderson for the touchdown. Sam Darnold delivers. Yeah, just man to man, at the 40 yard line, tight split. Just me and him, the whole field. I mean, squeeze him to the sideline. I didn't make the play. It is what it is, man. Like I said, the life of a corner who's, who's always in man coverage, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You know, and, and it is what it is. I have to, I can't think about it too much. I have to just go to the next week. It was still a close game at halftime, but they gave up the two big explosive plays. Ray, you mentioned it, effort, tackling, but technique is the big thing there. Yeah, and when you talk about that, you look at that run alone. There was three guys, Steve, that had an opportunity to make a play. You're talking about Chris Harris. You're talking about Roby, Stewart, all three defensive backs who should be better in that situation. One guy overplayed it, one guy wasn't physical enough, one guy overran it. And right. it's like, that is all technique stuff that can be fixed. And then it's just a matter of tackling. And you were one of the best tacklers ever. So you know, tackling <laughs> is want to. It's right. not about technique, it's want to. Uh, definitely want to, and, and also uh, guys make sure that they put themselves in position, breaking down to actually make those tackles. You can't just run full speed and, and think that that uh, running back or receiver is just gonna wait right there and let, let them hit you. So. Uh, yeah, guys got to break down and also on the edge. We're, we're not setting that edge. We're running upfield way too much yes. and leaving a huge void there for uh, the running backs to run through. And on each of those plays, our edge rusher was up the field much too far. And, and the one thing that you really put in, it's all about trust. It's all about trust. If I'm lined up next to Steve, I have to trust that Steve is going to do his job. Then I can focus on doing my job. Right now, I see guys' eyes looking at Steve's job when they should be focusing on their job. This defense is all about trust. And until you trust one another, then it doesn't matter what call Joe Woods make. It's going to look ugly. I think there was that third and one where Doma Tapeco seemingly had Crowell wrapped up in the backfield yeah. and then breaks free and he gets the first down. You could just kind of see the deflation. I mean, at plays like that impact a football game in a big way from just a momentum standpoint. And if that was one of the things I thought where, you know, there were those small moments, that play included, where it just felt like momentum just totally died. Now, Isaiah Corral, 219 yards on the ground, set a Jets franchise record. And it, it wasn't just Corral, he got beat over the top. Uh, you see Bradley Roby, it looks like he's the one in, on the film, not the dog on him a little bit, but. But you have to. <laughs> you, I'm just saying you have to because you know what rope is technique it's really technique stuff Phil and, and it's it's kind of hard to see 
when you watch and film because that you only see the end results as a corner. But me, when I look at the corners, Steve and I have discussed this many a time, that no man's land. They're still ending up four or five yards off a receiver. Receivers are too fast in the NFL to be that close. You have to be on, pressing, like really pressing, or off eight or nine yards so that you can play through the play. These guys, for whatever reason, they're getting in a position to where you cannot make plays. And, and it's hard to, to, for me, I see the eyes are bad. The reason why your eyes and your feet get bad is if you're out of position. If you're comfortable in a position that you can play, we have athletes. Roby is a first round, a big time athlete. He can play a lot better. I just see a lot of technique stuff right now that he's struggling with. Yeah, I mean, yeah, looking in the backfield, you see that there were two backs on that particular play that with max protection, you know, a good chance they can max protect with two backs in the backfield. So you could be anticipating a, a deeper run or a double move to where you don't bite on that first little stutter step that, he, that, that they gave him when uh, it would have been giving himself a much better chance of making a play on that ball. And that's all formational tendencies. That's, that's practice stuff too. So all this stuff goes back to technique and IQ. You know what formation they in. They have tendencies out of it. Play the tendencies. That way you don't get yourself in trouble. We thought maybe the Broncos would be able to jump back in the game in the second half, but it did not turn out like that. Shotgun snap, Darnold. Looks to the end zone, has an open receiver, a one-handed effort, and did he come down with it? He did. That is a great touchdown catch by Terrell Pryor. Keenum, a deep drop. Protection starts to break down. Home run ball wants DT down the sideline. DT makes the catch and walks into the end zone. Quick throw left side, knocked away and intercepted in the end zone. And the Jets will bring this out. Keenum has a chance to make the play, cannot. And this is gonna be, the Jets continue to run. Jets at midfield. This is Marcus May. May now gets a block to the five. He's pulled down by Cortland Sutton inside the one. And that's the end of the game. You know, it's tough. It's tough to win this league. You know, it, uh, they don't come easy. So we got another one coming up that's not going to come easy this week either. So, uh, you know, I'm, I know for a fact that this team's going to fight. We're going to get in there this week. We're going to work hard. And uh, we love playing at home. Uh, it's going to be a great matchup at home. Then let's talk about the offense side of the ball. Never really got into a rhythm. Never was able to use that running game effectively. The guys loading up the box. It's challenging Case Keenum. Yeah, and in that instance, Case has to find a way, or Musgrave has to find a way to turn first and second down passes into the run. Because if guys are going to play us eight men in a box, we have to figure out a way to throw the ball. You can't continue to challenge yourself because the averages look good, but it only looks good because we break a big run. But there's five or six runs in there that's two-yard gain or one-yard gain. Now we're off schedule. Yeah, and also I got to say the offensive line has to do a much better job of protecting him, giving him time to do that to where he doesn't have to just panic as, as soon as he gets back into the pocket. The guys are, you know, in his face uh, pressuring him. He's got playmakers. I mean, yeah. you, you would think that, hey, you'd be able to get some plays going, but never really found that rhythm. And we saw in the first half, especially with Hireman, first and goal, up the field, didn't throw it to the, he threw it to the back shoulder, Hireman cut up the field. Just little things, little routes that, you know, Case missed on that you need to hit when you're behind in order to establish that rhythm, establish that momentum, and they just didn't get it done. You talk about trust on defense. Case got to trust his guys that, hey, you're going to be able to make the play, right? Yes, and some of those throws that he's making, he's really late on them. I mean, there is a several guys, a slant I saw open, a crossing route I saw open, a hitch I saw. Take what they give you. You don't have to wait for the big play to develop. Sometimes just take what they give you and put yourself in a manageable down because Case is so much better when it's third and five. When it's third and eight or above, that's, he's not successful in that down, and that's where we've been. I think we had eight third and eights or more. Well, that's one of the things that we bragged about in the preseason was that he was so good at you know, anticipating where the receiver is going to be, throwing on timing, and it seems like he's gotten away from that here uh, the last few weeks. Well, a couple of picks will do that to you. One thing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's a good point. He's a little trigger shy. When that but I, I think that, you know, one good thing we did see, though, was the emergence of Deshaun Hamilton and Cortland Sutton. Right. Cortland getting into the end zone for his first career touchdown catch in the NFL. Deshaun hadn't had a catch up until this point, gets two in the first half. I think that those guys bringing them along, and DT also played well, yeah, had a bounce back game. game yeah. yeah, bounce back game. So I think getting those guys into a rhythm is also going to be very, very big. Broncos sitting at two and three. Plenty of good teams around the league have losing records right now. So a lot of football to play, but you got the Rams. They're perfect 5-0 and coming into town this week. 
Well, I tell you what, if the defense does not get together and understand who has what and start to trust each other, it'll be 70 to 5 this week. <laughs> yeah. This team will exploit it. So that, that's all. But you know what the good thing is, is Steve, and, and you know as well as I know, we had those days when you had some technique problems. If you go in and you discuss it and you really just hone in on your job, things can get better overnight. Yeah, the guys can't take things personally when the coaches are trying to, you know, make, make, make us a better team. Guys have to take that coaching and, and take it to heart and, and learn from it and, and try to put into action what the coach is trying to teach you on the field. And, um, you know, that's the only way it's going to work is everybody's on the same page. We've seen them play to the level of the best in the NFL. We, when the Chiefs came in here, they hung toe-to-toe -to -toe with them for three and a half quarters. I think this week is going to be very interesting, especially if Brandon Cooks and Cooper Cup don't play. Both of them are in the concussion protocol right now. I think that's going to be a very big storyline coming in because if both of those guys aren't on the field, the Broncos secondary, I mean, if they aren't on the field and the Broncos secondary can't put it together, that's a really bad sign. Well, let's we'll see if the Broncos can get back to 500 this week with the Rams coming into Denver. All right, that's going to do it for us. For Ray Crockett, Steve Atwater, Matt Boyer, I'm Phil Milani. This has been the Broncos Film Review.